here for a quick amount of video and today here at Nerd Mimic we are going to do a review of Moon Knight. This is Age of Anubis and this is book three of three of the Marvel Multiverse Missions gamebook line published by Asthma Day. It is authored by Jonathan Green who's a veteran of multiple fighting fantasy gamebooks and has multiple other gamebooks uh, part of the Ace gamebook line. Before we get started, hopefully you can hit that like and subscribe. It certainly helps out small channels like this one get started as we drive towards 1,000 subscribers. All right, so that being said, let's get started. So first of all, you're struck by the nice cover here of the title character, Moonlight. And once again, this is actually book three of three. The other books uh, feature Deadpool and the other one, She-Hulk. Now these two were actually authored by a different um, um, individual, uh, Timothy Dupopoulos. And these books are a lot more comedic in nature. This one is not as... So Jonathan Green is not known for his humor. He is known more for his uh, more eloquent prose. And that shows off in this book itself. Uh, his game books tend to have more structure and have a nice uh, flow to them. Um, so I would say that applies to this book as well. So uh, as a general overview of this book series, um, like Final Fantasy, there are three stats. For this one in particular, you have Might, Mind, and Mystic. So Might's uh, about your combat physical capability. Mind is your sense of uh, focus, and Mystic's your sense of persuasion within the game. Um, this game series also makes use of multiple other stats, their temporary stats, and uh, whenever they mention something uh, within parentheses, such as uh, eclipsed or in the heights, uh, you get a plus one to that stat. So, for example, just turning around the way here, you can see there's a plus one, and this is a, a stat that can go up or down. Same thing with the main three stats. And there's also a sense of inventory, and those are noted with brackets. Let's see if I can find one here. Like, here we go. So here, if you picked up an item, you uh, write it down on your piece of paper, and it's uh, denoted with brackets. And you could carry five items within the game, and if you find extra, you're going to have to uh, discard one. So it's pretty cool that uh, there is an inventory system within the game and multiple stats, and when you achieve a certain um, milestones, you actually get achievement points. Um, so that is something you can record. And I think there's a list of them in the back here. Here we go. And this lends to great replayability, you know, just like an Xbox game. Uh, sometimes it might be fun to just go through the game just to hit all these achievements. And so that's a pretty cool addition that they have in all three books. So um, this game, um, you do not play Moon Knight itself, just like the other two books. Uh, you are playing a uh, civilian that happens to accompany the title character throughout the adventure. And in this book, basically, you are an Egyptologist and you are in a museum when the living mummy comes and steals an artifact. So living mummy is actually a uh, Marvel uh, character uh, that was created in 1973. And there are other characters you encounter within the Marvel Universe within this book. There's the Werewolf that you saw in the Disney Plus show. There is Craven, And there's also Shadow Knight, which, if you don't know, is Moon Knight's brother. And if they continue to do the Disney Plus show, I'm sure he's going to uh, be part of it as well. So um, I played through the entire game. Uh, because the it has more of a modern design, they're less um, quick the ends. What I mean by that, there's a lot of uh, sections where, you, you know, if you lose a battle or something like that, it's not the end of the game. It just moves on and maybe take a deduction stat and you can keep on flowing and reading the story. Uh, once you get closer to the end, um, there are uh, no second chances uh, when you get close to the end. Uh, but... Regardless, uh, it flows very nicely. There are about 300 passage, uh, passages in this book. Um, so it's a little bit shorter than, say, your standard uh, fighting fantasy book. 
and modern game books as I don't know if uh, most of you know can have uh, thousands of uh, passage passages nowadays. Um, now the big negatives about this book is aside from the cover here there's no real original art in the book. They have small little caricatures here at the end of passageways but there's no full page artwork whatsoever. So I always think that's a missed opportunity. I understand it's cheaper to produce a book this way, but uh, I would love to have uh, some scattered full page artwork interior in the interior of the book. Another negative. I would say the other negative thing about this book is it's more serious tone and Jonathan Green's known uh, to mimic many different styles of prose. And I can see how he was trying to copy the original structure of these first two books and maybe even try a copy of his uh, the sense of humor. But uh, I, I don't think it is as funny as these first two for sure. So his sense of humor is a little bit lacking in this book. Um, so uh, for this book, I, I think it's Jonathan Green's probably average work. It's not his best work. Yeah, he has done other game books, uh, such as uh, this Alice in Wonderland, if you could find this one. This is a fantastic one. He has done other uh, books, uh, such as Beowulf and a Dracula one. Um, and I'll put a link below to those other videos that I did uh, showcasing them. But, uh, so I would put this, uh, you know, run in the mill. Uh, still, it's fun to read just because it's Marvel and you get to interact with those other characters and, uh, you know, and it's game book form. So I can't wait to see what other characters they showcase in this series. Uh, once again, this is the third one so far and I know they plan to make out more. So thank you for watching. Everyone have a great night and keep on adventuring out there.